Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing some spark plugs and wires on this 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. Running a bit rough, and before I read the code, I'm going to do this regular maintenance of replacing the spark plugs and the wires to see if that fixes it. Then I'm going to have a buddy come over and we're going to find out that the code is completely unrelated, but then we will have replaced the spark plugs and wires, and we know that we should do that anyway. So, we're gonna do that today and see what happens. Hey, so one of the biggest problems that people have when they have these sideways mounted engines is getting to those spark plugs in the very, very back. So, um, in the old Chevy Venture I had, man, it was a nightmare. I had to take off a, a, a motor uh, mount and, and uh, grab the engine and crank it forward to get it to tilt enough to get back there. But this Chrysler Town & Country has got uh, a ton of space. You could almost put like a suitcase back there. But um, anyway, you just follow follow these wires here that go to each of the spark plugs from this ignition coil. I think it's an ignition coil. Either way, it's the wire thingy that takes the electricity out of the spark plugs. Now, I've got my hand on the hardest one to reach, which is in fact uh, the furthest one back. I could go that way, but there's a lot of um, why, uh, too many, too many things, but um, I'll find where the wire is. I'm gonna jiggle with my, with my hand strength on the boot there. Oh, boot popped off. Yep, got her. And then I've got, I got my spark plug socket. I'm gonna stick that guy down there. I'm gonna put it on there. Uh, I wanted to put it on right after I got the boot off because a lot of. There's actually a lot of pokey things in the back of that engine. Okay, there we go. I got her on there, so now I can at least find it. And we're gonna do this one at a time to make sure we don't uh, accidentally do the wires wrong because they are different lengths and they go in different spots here and it's a whole timing mechanic-y thing. So thank goodness it's not a Chevy Venture. There was a YouTuber who made a video and the title was changing the spark plugs on a, on a Chevy Venture. And it was basically just just uh, a picture of snowy woods and the description said something like hey uh <laughs> this is the feeling you're gonna have when you realize what you have to do to change the spark plugs on the chevy venture so yeah first step drop the engine six inches you know stuff like that so i can't talk and work this at the same time so i'm gonna go and we'll get the first one out take a look at her see what she looks like and uh pop the new one in all right and if this ends up going on youtube um, for people who are just looking for those rear spark plugs, um, this is my ratchet, and I will show you in a bit um, what that looks like as far as the extension I used. What is that? I can't tell what this camera is looking at. Uh, it's in here somewhere. Well, anyway, that's where I'm at uh, in the scheme of things. So I'm I'm just uh, backing out this spark plug gently, and we're gonna find it out. So. I've got my right arm down the back of this thing from the driver's side, um, uh, kind of snaked all the way through to the passenger side where that far spark plug is. So you can absolutely reach these on uh, these vans. So we're going to get that out and then we're going to take a look at the ratchet I'm using. Uh, nothing special. I can totally tell that the spark plugs definitely need to be replaced, but this is the ratchet I'm using. That's like a two or three inch extension there um on a basically import stanley tool set i've had for uh last 20 years or so um you check a look at this spark plug she's definitely not focusing how do i get that to focus my goodness there it is that that does that doesn't look normal like uh i know they're the pointy kind of um whatever contact dealy thing uh, this is the, they're all pokey kind on this van right now because I took one out of the front already because nobody really cares about the front. The, those are so easy to change that uh, you could do it just for fun. But uh, the ones on the back, you actually have to budget some time and a good snack to get there. But uh, that don't look um, good. So replacing is definitely in order. So I'm going to put some anti-seize on a new spark plug. I'm going to start it in there, making sure I don't feel resistance, not cross-thread the thing. But there's my, there's my ratchet. 
and uh, one of the old spark plugs. This is the farthest, hardest one to get to, and I'm a novice. I know nothing. So all I know is that I've got some mild ambition and a pair of Carhartt bib overalls, and ambition and Carhartts, you can do pretty much anything. All right, so a couple things here. Uh, first spark plug went in with the Andy C's. Just kind of feel around for the hole with the finger, and then, um, you know, make sure it's going in and if there's any resistance, right, in anything, don't force something that don't want to be forced because that's not, that's not good advice for life and it's not good advice for spark plug replacement. So I did the second one. The bit of advice for everybody who's asking about, um, well, nobody asks me anything, but for anybody who's worried about um, getting back here, tech tip, um, same ratchet's working for spark plug number two. Just put the put the ratchet handle towards the passenger side, as you have plenty of room on the farthest spark plug and the middle one so far. So those are the hard ones, um, from what I can gather. Everything else should be easy peasy uh, after this, but uh, definitely point that ratchet handle toward the passenger side, and then um, we're gonna replace the the wire. So we pulled the boot off of the off of the third spark plug and it's hanging here. So then I find out where it goes into this guy. Gentle pressure. Then you got yourself a little little trout cable. So you know then you got this bundle of bundle of new wires. Oh the wind. And then you can see the length. Just grab the one that's the same length as the one you pulled off. Right there. See, I can already, I can already tell which one it's supposed to be. So grab, grab this one. Anyway, <laughs> just grab that one there. And then uh, before you do anything, yeah, actually, there's a lot of soft uh, hoses that you can lay your your arm can kind of rest on right there. So for this guy, it's gonna go jiggle, jiggle, snip. We're gonna set her back here. We're gonna feel around with the finger. What in the world is going on? Yeah, feeling around. Mm -hmm. Feel the top. Hey, focus. Good grief. You got the boot on there, line it up. A little bit of gentle pressure, and you'll feel it catch there. Yep. So she's in. Like, hey, what's the worst thing that could happen? My saying is we can always spend more money and redo something, right? Or have a professional do it. So that's number two. So I got these uh, cables going there. So we're just gonna keep doing that and I uh, probably won't have much to say about the other one. Should be the easiest. All right, so I got them all. The, it's funny that the the far, the passenger, or the passenger side in the rear was the worst looking spark plug, but the one up here on the, the driver's side in the rear uh, the spark plug was loose, like it was barely uh, hand tight, like the loosest definition of hand tight. So that definitely probably played part of it. I'm gonna do the entire, the last spark plug here in its entirety uh, for posterity here. You know, that wire seems a little bit loose. I'm gonna grab the boot. Is that called a boot? Actually, I'm just gonna disconnect it from here first. Seems kind of short, but she pops off. That'll give me a better grab here so we can do this. Of course, it's the most embarrassing one. So that comes off with firmness, but no rippage. I'm gonna grab the same ratchet. So on the front, grab it out of. I actually found that because of the angles of these spark plugs in the back, point your ratchet towards the passenger side in the front point towards the driver's side same ratchet set up with the same socket um, and I should probably save the size of, of the, uh, the spark plug socket I'm using but it's the smaller of the two that you usually get in a cheap tool set so I think they'll all work unless something really bad happens but the worst thing is you got to buy a new car or replace an engine or start walking everywhere you go so we're gonna crank this out here um, so we'll just do the entire thing in one go, but yeah, that's the advice. Yes, you can reach the ones in the rear. Just follow 
the cables from the uh, ignition coil there or whatever that's called please correct me if i'm wrong make fun of me it's all good um follow it there pull the boot off find the spark plug you know use this ratchet set up you get your deal off i don't know if this is ready to come yet let me check if it's i mean it's kind of hand turnable but really not you know so i got scared on the last one because i kept tightening and tightening and it never seemed to get tight but as long as it's ratchet the ratchet's doing its ratchet thing and uh the anti seize just got the little packet there prevent yourself some uh sticking galling and seizing these are all things you'd like to avoid in life as well as in these spark plugs. okay then the, it comes off it's got the little rubber deal inside that spark plug socket spark plug socket is five eighths there we go so this is the last one of these set that over here next to the gloves i should be wearing and then i got one all gooped up with anti seize not too much not too little not interfering with things and then uh should go right back in there and uh you kind of see the angles that they're coming out at so you just gently start it not ratcheting it down super tight until you get it started you can also just use until you're ready for it just use the socket in a hand but it gets kind of funky but as long as there's no major resistance i hear you're fine the anti-seize will help for when it uh needs to be removed again and so you won't hurt down on them too hard just firm just down to the bottom and an eighth of a turn is what one internet guy told me and that sounded good enough to me you go too hardcore um and this is one of the things that somebody is in uh, i think it's an easy enough job but somebody could really mess up the truck or their car if you break that thing off in there then i'm pretty sure you've got major issues so and we're getting some great clicks out of it now so she'll go all the way in there Sorry, it's the long form, and it's the reason the long form is to show the entire thing. So while you're cranking it, you can just contemplate life, think about the decisions you made, the decisions you'd like to make, you know, how you got to where you are, where you want to be, all that kind of stuff. And eventually, as you contemplate life, you'll know you need to be done contemplating when this thing kind of reaches the end. Now, I'm sure you could do, oh man, I don't know if you can get carpal tunnel twice, but well on my way here. It's just a lot of threads. You know, it's like the never-ending sc screw thread. Okay. Then all of a sudden, it kind of stops. And then, so what I do is then just snug up a tiny bit. And according to one guy on the internet, that's the way to do it. Then I've got one remaining cable or one remaining plug. I'm just going to stick that on there. I did not put any uh, dialectic grease on there because I asked the dude if I needed grease. He's like, oh, I'll hook you up. And then he gave me the, I'm gonna put this on the top. There's a little, little holder there. Okay. And then just gently with firmness. I think you can be gentle and firm at the same time. And all this stuff is ready to, ready to go up here and it's got sorry it's got this little clippity cricket here makes everything look cool the back don't have one of those or didn't when I got to it, it had a zip tie that disintegrated but um, I also put my fat arm on this hose here it disconnected from its thing right up there uh, connect that back in there but I don't know what that is anyway I think we're ready to start her up and see if we were successful clean up a little bit and then I'll either be super sad or mildly happy. So the great sadness, I went into the house uh, and I told, I declared, you know, out loud, this is get ready for the moment of truth. Find out what's going on. My son was there and I just said, son, uh, the truth is the truth, whether it's a sad truth or a happy truth. Um, it is what it is. It's the truth. And the truth is, 
this dog is <laughs> this dog is still shaking like a car pooping peach pits but uh this car is still shaking so um there might be something else but at least i did the spark plugs so maybe i'll look at the ignition coil next uh maybe replace it because it seems to be somewhat easy but kind of sad kind of sad but let's see if we can rev this guy up you can kind of see the see the uh the image shaking so the image stabilization because the van the van is shaking it does okay when it's hear that uh oh we had a similar experience we had a similar experience with the chevy venture uh turned out to be like a head gasket and a bad omen so well, I don't know. We'll, I guess we'll find out what it is. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, whatevs. Still a good day, I guess. Hey, so all in, I uh, spent 125 bucks trying to get the van working again. It was uh, running rough this morning, kind of shaking the entire car. Engine light came on. And so I'm thinking easiest thing to do, spark plugs and wires. So I do spark plugs and the wires and uh, went from there. I did go to the auto parts store and borrow their scan tool, check the, check the code. There was a misfire and um, so the logical next step before, you know, getting professional help is change out the ignition coil, which um, YouTube said was pretty easy to do. So I did uh, change out the, here's all the stuff I changed out today and um, Look right there, the ignition coil says it's bad. I should have noticed that earlier on, but it's in there, I'm running like a champ. Everything going on, so I got all this stuff, a little spider deal. But um, anyway, pretty cool day for DIY. And if you have actually watched this video, I appreciate it. And I love you all, goodbye.